Hey everyone, Ryan Young, Kama Jiu Jitsu. I hope you're doing well. You know, the funniest thing happened, well, I don't know if it, I don't think it's funny, but funny as in something you didn't expect, right? Happened when I was at a tournament this past weekend and we, uh, we didn't have very many competitors. We never really have a lot of competitors. We might have a handful of competitors. I think probably the biggest tournament we ever did was back in 2018 when Hicks and Gracie came to town and he did the Hicks and Gracie Cup. So we put together a team, right? Thought to myself, man, you know, Grandmaster Hickson's in town. Being that we do have Hickson Gracie's name on our logo, as far as I know, we're the only school in the world allowed to do that. <laughs> and I thought, you know what? We better represent, right? So, um, so we put together a, a team of eight. That's a big team for us, right? Um, we did well, though, because um, I think... I don't know how they calculate teams, uh, team scores, but with eight people, we ended up taking third place team because we had uh, like 10 gold medals uh, because we had enough members that were uh, both in their weight class and in the absolute. Uh, they didn't have gi and no gi, it was just gi only for that particular tournament. But you know, when you, I guess when you win a lot of golds and you win by submissions, I, is there a point difference? for submissions um but anyway so uh <clears throat> not to brag but I, it's just the mindset that i'm trying to to get to you in this particular video um i think that got us to be successful because you know we had eight members third place team trophy second place had 33 members first place they had five schools to make one team and they had 88 members so um, but anyway, um, so this past weekend, we, we did a tournament, or we had um, two, two kids and one adult that did a tournament. And everyone knows that to be successful in a tournament in our school, you need to submit people. You know, the points wins, although within the rules of any tournament, a points win is a win. To us, a points win means that time ran out. That's all it is, right? It's even worse when it's zero, zero, and then you start counting advantages, which are failed attempts, right? But you attempted it, so you get an advantage, right? And ref even worse, when there's no advantages because people just stood up the whole time, then the ref has to choose somebody. And then it comes down to who does the ref like better. For the most part, refs don't like me <laughs> so i always tell the students look if it comes down to a decision by the ref accept that you're gonna lose but if it comes down to a ref then it was just one of those time ran out situations again and i tell my students look tournaments are different than just training right if you're just training in 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 the in the class or an open mat you always go to submission unless they put a timer on then sometimes time can run out before anybody gets submitted but with us, it's all about just training and, and sparring and, and tapping the person out. So it could take you 20 minutes. How many matches could go in 20 minutes time, right? So for this particular individual, he was masters. Well, he's masters four, but he went down to masters three. So he went one age group younger and he went one weight class up. So I think he weighs about 195 and he went up to the 215 weight category. Just because there weren't enough people that were blue belts in that in his category. So instead of just saying, oh, well, there's not enough people, I won't do it. He actually sought out opponents and he went down an age class and up a weight class to, to compete. So I'm very proud of him for that. But the mindset is still the same. It, it's still, you need to submit your opponents. Right, it, it, in my mind, a win is a submission. A win is when somebody, okay, you know, they give up. But if time ran out, they didn't give up. So what's the use, right? And being that I give up my weekend to do tournaments, right? Because I I teach. You know, I'm in the studio almost every single day of the week, and then Saturday and Sunday, you know, I like to spend at home. I do teach in the morning on Saturdays, but after that, I go home. 
but for a tournament which happens Saturday and, and it's from 9 a.m. all the way into the late afternoon, you know, I want our students to, to go in there to win, right? Not just go in there to win because sometimes to win, you, you know, if you go two matches and just win by points, you win eight to nothing, you know, that's a win in the tournament. So another thing that I hear a lot is, did you tap him? No, but I dominated him. What does that mean, right? You dominated him. Did you submit him? No. You just scored a lot of points. Big deal, right? I've mentioned this before in other videos, but I, I don't know exactly what the record is, but Crone Gracie, when he was a brown belt, he went something like 86, and no 86 to nothing, right? I mean, he won 86 matches and he lost none of them. And they were all wins by submission. From what I remember, every single one of his wins during brown belt were via submission. He also has the the best record um, for or number highest number of comebacks in order to win. Meaning he could be down twenty five to nothing and he ends up submitting the guy and wins. Right now, at the end of the day, a submission is a win. A submission trumps points. You know, this came up in one of our other tournaments where it was a three man bracket. It was it was just three guys. So. One went against two, and one went against three. And then what happened was, you know, everybody had to go against the other opponent. And then they take whoever had the best win record, win-loss record, and and, to, and and calculate the winner that way. Well, I think, if I remember right, um, the guy that they had picked as the first place winner, the judges, you know, the ref, Connell with the judges, got together, and they picked one of the three guys as first because he went one and one whereas uh and two guys first place went one on one second place went one and one third place went oh and two meaning the third place guy lost to both guys and um the the two guys they they swapped um i, I can't remember how but it, that's how it ended up well they picked the guy who was going to be the top guy but i saw all the matches whereas my guy who they had put in second place. I asked him, I go, why'd you put him in second place? And they said, well, because uh, the guy who, who we gave first place to accumulated more points in his matches. And I said, oh, how much does a submission count? And then they looked at each other and the coach for the guy who they marked as first place, you know, it's all in Portuguese. I don't know what they're saying, right? Refs, um, judges, and school owner, all speaking Portuguese. In the U.S., they should be speaking English, but whatever. But I just saw how the the coach was coaching the judge on on how to calculate the winner, and I'm just standing watching. And I'm saying, okay, my guy is not up on top, and that's when I that's when I asked him. I go, all right, so my guy didn't score as many points as the guy you put on first place, but how much is a submission worth? And as soon as that happened, the judge looked at the other school owner, the other coach, and said something in Portuguese, and then crossed out his guy and put my guy on top. Now, that pissed off the other coach, but I'm just asking an honest question. You know, what's worth more, points or submission? Apparently, a submission. So our guy ended up winning first. And that's me as a coach doing my job and lobbying for my guy. And just making sure that my guy gets, or gal, if it were, um, gets their fair, gets their fair opportunity. But we would not have been in this situation had my student not lost. He didn't get tapped, but he lost. So that's one part that I want to talk about that I already did, obviously. And the next part was this last tournament that we did. I, I spoke to one of the guys who was a competitor. He wasn't in my, uh, my, my member's bracket. He was in another another weight class. I think he was in the lower weight class. But he lost his match badly, 18 to nothing. So when he came off the mat, I stopped and I, I stopped him and I asked him, I said, is this your first tournament, right? Because it looked like other people that I've seen, you know, my own members included, how they do their first tournament and they literally freeze up. They, they don't remember anything they were taught and they just go according to fight or flight mentality. So I asked this guy, he says, well, he goes, if you count really the first time I'm in a match in 25 years, then yeah, it's my, my first time. Um, and 
I just thought to myself, man, you know, and I, and I said, you know, that's okay, you know, things things will get better, right? And then he did a second match and he lost something like eight to nothing. I spoke to him after that, and uh, thankfully he recognized me. Um, and but we ended up talking later on, and he says, my coach told me to not try to submit the guy, but just to score points. I said, so if you had a submission available to you, you're not supposed to take it. He says, no, he told me just to score points. And uh, he says, and my kids, they meddled in their, in their tournament and they were told the same thing, right? To, to not, not go for submissions, which is weird because, well, to me, because I don't know that type of thinking. Is that how it is with um, competition schools now? where the points are more important than the submissions. I, I don't, I, maybe I get for kids telling kids not to do that because you're afraid of an injury, but for adults, right? And, and I told him, I said, you know what I told my student before his first match? He says, what? And I said, you better get two submissions from your matches. Cause I, he had two matches. I said, you better rip two submissions out. And he goes, he's kind of, wow. And I go, yeah. I go, why are we here? You know, we're here to find out who's better. You don't find out who's better by points as Crone Gracie proved. Maybe it's just because I come from the old school, right? For those of you who think old school, what is old school? Okay, I started 1989. So I've been doing this for a little while, right? Um, because I start from the old school, because my first instructor was Helson, because my second instructor was Hoist, third instructor in the same building was Horian, fourth was Fabio Santos, and my fifth instructor was Hickson, right? So my first five instructors are all about submissions. Maybe that's maybe that's the problem because I started too long ago and I started with those particular instructors where it was all about submissions because at the end of the day you want to win and you want to say you won and you won convincingly saying you dominated somebody because you ran up the score 30 to nothing doesn't mean anything you know there was a, a Hall's Gracie black belt and I, I remember watching an interview of him and I don't remember which one it was it might have been it was either Mauricio Gomez or it was um is it Marcio Stambowski uh, it was one of those two and he had competed this is when he was competing for halls decades ago probably probably in the 70s and had entered a competition and ran the score up to something like 12 to nothing and then submitted the guy and after the match he walks over to Halls and Halls is pissed off. And he's wondering, you know, what he did wrong. He 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 dominated the guy and then he won. So I think the next day he asked Halls, he says, um, why were you upset at me yesterday when I shut the guy out, right? Twelve to nothing, and I submitted him. Halls told him the reason why he was upset was because you didn't tap him sooner why did you have to go and score 12 points before you submitted him you could have submitted him after three for instance he could have been three to nothing with a submission you could have ended the match a minute sooner that makes a lot of sense right so that's it's not because of him that i think like that it's probably because of people who who, he, who halls influenced you know hickson halls uh, I mean, Hickson, um, Helson, that I think like that. And because I think like that, then, and that's that's my formative years in jiu-jitsu, that's what I insist on today, right? And it's a mindset that you breed in your membership. And that's the, the mindset that I've chosen, as well as Dave Kama, have chosen to put into our members, right? Compete but compete to submit. Just winning by points, although it'll get you into the next bracket. It'll get you the gold medal in a finals match. That's not the optimal win. And I can even tell you 
and maybe this is a fault of mine, but I'm always looking for flaws, even in a gold medal winning match or the series of matches leading up to a gold medal win. I'm always looking for flaws. Oh, you know, okay, that was a great win. You did submit the guy, but you submitted him at four minutes and 30 seconds. But here at two minutes and 30 seconds, you had an opportunity to submit him and you missed it, right? And I'm not saying it because I'm not happy. I'm very happy that he won. But I've always been of the mindset that you can always improve something. You, you know, and it's like with, with just training in jujitsu, you may be able to get out of an arm bar from everybody in the school. But does that mean you can get out of the arm bar from everybody? No. So you need to look for the person who can lock the arm up so that you cannot get out. So now you have to take your defense up to a higher level. Always look for flaws in your game to make your game better. To be satisfied with what you have, to be satisfied with the status quo means you will not rise, right? It's all about rising, right? I want to take my students and myself up to the highest level that I can humanly go. And even then, when I hit that level, which is the highest I can humanly go or someone else can humanly go, I'm looking for other ways to take them up even higher, right? I want my members to go higher than they even thought possible. So if they win a match, I'm looking for the flaws in the match. Another thing is that I'm always happy, but I don't jump for joy. Right? It's And this actually came from, um, I was reading Emmett Smith's uh, biography. Uh, it was either bi I don't, biography, autobiography, one of those. Um, and it was, this is years ago, maybe 10 years ago, I read this book. And I think it was a it was a point at which he had just gotten out of college. I think he went to Florida and went to the Cowboys, made his first touchdown. Made his first touchdown and in the end zone, did an end zone dance. Like a lot of players do, right? They do their dance, you know, whatever. His father, when he got home, called him or told him face to face, I don't know what it was. It was basically, what the fuck was that? And Emmett's reaction was, I made a touchdown. You know, first touchdown I've ever made in pro football and I did it in Dallas Cowboys. The father told him, you're supposed to make touchdowns. Okay, so why are you celebrating what you're supposed to do? Get in there, make those touchdowns, and act like you're supposed to have done it. Don't act like it was the greatest thing in the world because it's not. It's your job. You know, another person who I admire as a football player was Barry Sanders. Barry Sanders, in Emmett Smith's words, is the greatest running back of all time. Now, you guys can, you know, differ with that opinion. I was never a Detroit Lions fan. I, I've always been a Dallas Cowboys fan. You know, hate me for that, whatever. But when I saw the two of them sitting next to each other and somebody was interviewing them, they asked Emmett Smith, who do you think is the greatest running back of all time? And Emmett just goes, and he points to Barry Sanders. And Barry Sanders just kind of smiles, right? What happened there? Emmett Smith pointing to him, saying he's the greatest, did Barry Smith go, no, Emmett's the greatest? Barry knew he was the greatest. And Emmett knew he was the greatest. But whenever Barry Sanders made a touchdown, he'd run into the end zone and he'd jog over to the ref and flip the ball over to the ref and just continue running. He didn't celebrate. He may have kept a ball. Maybe it was a record ball or something like that. He may have kept it in that case. But you didn't see him celebrating in the, in the end zone. Same thing with, you know, winning a jiu-jitsu tournament. I've seen people, they have their hands up in the air, they're hitting their chest, like, yeah, I'm the greatest. And in my mind, I'm thinking, you were surprised that you won? Didn't you train for this knowing you were going to win? Or you trained for this thinking you were going to get your ass kicked, and then you were surprised and happy that you ended up winning, right? It's a mindset. Right, so I try to have all my students, when they compete, number one, submission only. 
We're not happy with anything else. Number two is when you win, go and shake the other coach's hand, shake the other player's hand, right? Give a high five here and there, but walk off because I expect you to win as you should be expecting yourself to win as well. And lastly, at the end of the match or the next day when we're going over tape, acknowledge your flaws and fix those flaws. Just because you won doesn't mean you didn't have any flaws. I'll find those flaws and we're gonna fix them so that next time you'll be closer to perfect, right? Good jujitsu is all about getting closer to perfect, right? Dave Kaba tells me, we need to make jujitsu so that even an eight-year-old girl can do what we're doing. If they, if she cannot do it, it's not perfect yet. Guess what? If that's the criteria for perfect, we have a lot of work to do. Anyway, I hope that kind of helped you, and I, I just had to bring this up because it's been I mean, it's been on my mind for for a week now um, about a coach telling students not to go for submissions. Even if they're there, just go for the points. Yeah, it blows my mind. All right, rant over. Anyway, take care. Happy training. Bye now.